lenders are expected to target financial firms in Southeast Asia in 2013. What are your views? Will China's M&A activities rise? Um, I, I think the Chinese banks will continue to expand in Southeast Asia. Um, I don't see them expanding elsewhere in the world, i.e. in some of the developing countries like the U.S. or in, in Europe. Uh, but I do think you could see a couple of the banks make some select acquisitions in Southeast Asia. The challenge really is getting regulatory approval. Uh, you know, we have seen regulators clamping down on foreign uh, purchases of local uh, financial institutions. So that will be the challenge, I think, for the banks in 2013 and may limit uh, that M&A activity. China is moving toward a more consumption-driven growth model under the new leadership. What sort of challenges could Chinese banks face as a result of the financial reforms? Uh, I think the biggest uh, challenge for the Chinese banks will be liberalization of interest rates. Uh, throughout the past 20 years, the government has kept deposit interest rates low to help support uh, the manufacturing sector, i.e. so the manufacturing sector can get access to cheap loans. But going forward, you need to make sure that individuals are able to generate income with their savings, uh, which would imply higher deposit interest rates, which would encourage consumption from uh, the populace within China. So that liberalization of interest rates, that I think is going to be the key challenge for the banks. And, you know, we saw that start in mid-2012. That's going to continue into 2013 and in the, uh, the years beyond. You mentioned these reforms will benefit smaller banks in the longer term, but large banks are best positioned for medium term. Why is that? Well, the large banks have the best deposit franchises. Uh, they have very strong retail deposit franchises. So when the government lifts the cap on deposit interest rates, what you're going to see is those smaller banks that have the weaker franchises, they're going to have to go out and compete for those deposits. The only way they can do that is with pricing. Uh, as a result, you're going to see the net interest margins uh, contract the most at the small banks in the near term as their funding costs rise. What is your outlook of the Chinese banking sector in 2013? Um, I'm actually a bit more sanguine, I think, than the market. I don't think net interest margins in particular for the large banks are going to compress as much as the market is expecting. Uh, we will begin to start seeing some NPL formation. NPL ratios will rise, especially in eastern China. Central and western China look to be doing very well. So the banks that have exposure to that central and western areas of China, the large banks in particular, China Construction Bank uh, is one that comes to mind, um, they should do well in 2013. Uh, other than that, I think it's going to be a decent year for banking. ROEs will come down a little bit from last year. Growth will slow, uh, but nonetheless, uh, I don't expect any significant problems uh, as the government puts in place new reforms. Which banks would you overweight and which ones would you underweight and why? Uh, my two favorite banks are CCB and Bank of China. They have very good deposit franchises, going to be less exposed uh, to the impacts of interest rate liberalization. Um, at the other end, uh, it's the smaller banks that I would avoid, uh, in particular China Merchants Bank. Uh, in the near term, they're really tight for liquidity. They're going to have to be chasing deposits uh, by increasing their funding costs. Uh, in addition, in general, the smaller banks are more exposed to eastern China. Eastern China is really where you're seeing the slowdown uh, in the mainland. It's not central and western China. So, you know, simply their geographical footprint is going to hurt them as we move through 2013.